Hey guys, John here. We are back with another Pigments Week, which is super exciting. Now, we've done a lot of Pigments content on the channel, and for this week, I decided to do something slightly different, kind of to pick a certain technique that we can build these patches around. So we are gonna build them one-to-one -one and kind of show how everything works, but more importantly, the technique, what this whole patch or these patches are gonna be built around. So the first one is called the Hacker, and it sounds something kind of like this with a kick drum in the background. And we have four macros here. We have a cutoff. We have a resonance, which is pretty self-explanatory. We have distortion. And then our effects, which is also pretty self-explanatory, but we're gonna get to those. So what is this thing this whole patch is built around? So this one is built around phase cancellation. So. We're only using really one engine here. I don't believe we are using the, uh, we're using this a little bit here for the low end, but mainly it's gonna be here in the analog engine. So the important thing is if we look at these first two oscillators, we can see that we have the default saw wave and then down here we have another default saw wave, but it's gonna be an inverted phase. Now, normally this would cancel each other out, right? If you have two of the opposite phases at the same amplitude, it's gonna cancel each, cancel each other out, which they don't. <laughs> as we can clearly hear things going on. Now, the reason this doesn't happen is because of this drift knob down over here. So on this instance, let's go ahead and switch to this guy. Let's go ahead and start recreating some things one-to-one. -one. So let's go to a new preset and we're gonna be using the analog. So we go to the analog. Now by default, we have the saw wave, which, okay, that's cool. That's all fine and dandy. However, if we look here, we also have this inverted saw wave. So if we click this on the second one and bring the volume up all the way, we still hear it and it almost kind of sounds like a pulse wave, kind of a square wave, which it kind of is with the phase cancellation going on. And that's due to this drift knob. If we took this all the way down and started playing stuff, we're not gonna we're not gonna hear anything. As you can see over here on the keyboard, we don't hear anything. It's only once we start increasing this knob here that we're gonna hear some different, uh, we're actually gonna hear something. Now the cool part about this technique is that we always have a different note that we hear. It's not gonna be the same every single time. Do something a little on the lower end. And if we hold it down, we can kind of hear them moving back and forth between each other. Which can be a pretty cool effect. So if we double click this back to its default point 010, that's what we're gonna be doing over here if we kind of highlight it here. So now let's kind of go and start recreating this patch here because this kind of how it's almost like a, like a 303 kind of style to it. It's gonna be interesting. Anyway, let's get into this here. So for the first one here, we have just that so far. Now we need to change the uh, the pitch here. So we have down 12 semitones and down 12 semitones as well. So we can drop these both down here. So negative 12. Something kind of like that there. Now this fine tuning is gonna be zero. We don't really need to change this at all here. This one's going to filter one, which is gonna be the MS-20. So let's go ahead and start doing that routing. So we have this done and we need to change this to the MS-20 or we can just scroll once depending on how you wanna do it. Now, if we look at this here, our cutoff is manually placed at 105, which we can bring that down, something like that here, which doesn't really sound too exciting, right? So we have a couple of different modulations. So the first one is gonna be this envelope two. So we can drag and drop this guy here. Now the depth here is gonna be 0.10. So rather small here, so 0.10. Now let's take a look at this envelope and see these settings here. So envelope two, if we look at this guy, the attack is gonna be one, which I believe is default. And then we have 500 milliseconds. So bring this up like this a bit. So we have one and then we have 500 milliseconds. Sustain is gonna be down to zero, which is default here. And then the release is 100. So we can pretty much leave everything default, negative two for the curve, which I believe should be the same. Yeah. So basically once you drag and drop that and do 0 0.10, we should be fine. So we have a little bit of that modulation going there. So next up, we have an LFO, which is LFO1 at 0.15. So let's go ahead and make that move. LFO1, drag and drop, and we can bring this down to 
five. Now, if we look at the, L, uh, the LFO in the first one here, we can see the rate is at 0.5, which is rather slow. So let's get this guy, and I guess we're already at default, so that's cool. But here, we're restarting every single time that we hit a note, so we're re-triggering this on the poly keyboard. However, on the original patch, we're gonna be on free running, so regardless, the LFO is just gonna keep cycling, and we're gonna hop on wherever it happens to be in its cycle. So let's change this to free running. So if we hold this down here, it's kind of just always moving like that, just as well as this one is here. Now, the third modulation is going to be the macro one, which we're going to get to that in just a sec. Actually, you know what? Let's do that Do that now while we're here. So macro one, 0.33. So macro one, drag and drop. And then we're going to go 0.33 for that. And then I guess 0.34 is fine. And then we're kind of about halfway in the middle of this knob here. So we can bring this up, something like that, and then double click this guy. And let's select cut off. So now we can have a a little bit of a range to work with here. Okay, so next up that's gonna be important is gonna be the resonance. So this one is macro two at 0 0.70, so rather high. So second one, let's drag and drop this here to resonance and then 0 0.70. So we're kind of up like that. So double click this, let's go to res, that's fine. Okay, so we have this pretty much set up here. We can add the utility engine. So this is just going to be a sine wave, which is automatically down an octave. And then our output is going to be at negative 8.82. So let's turn this guy on and then negative 8.82. We can bring it down something like that. There we go. Okay, we have something cool like that. Okay, so engine two, we're not using it all. Engine one, I believe we are all good here. So now we should go into the effects because this is kind of where some of the fun happens. So in the effects, if we go to our effects category, we can actually remove all of these here for now. And the first one is gonna be this distortion and we can click here and add our distortion. And this algorithm, is gonna be an asymmetrical, which is a very interesting one. And for this patch, we're gonna be going pretty crazy. So the drive is gonna be all the way to the top here. And then if we look at this here, this is gonna be on macro three, which is one. So we have this distortion macro, so we can might as well map that now. So let's bring this down all the way to zero, macro three, drag and drop this here, and crank this all the way to one, which is close, there we go, to one. And then double click and name this distortion. And then we can bring this all the way up. So it's going to start start sounding crazy. Okay. So we have this basically set up now. Now, next up, we're doing a multiband after that. So we can go here and click our multiband. And for this guy, I kind of like just bringing the low end up a little bit and maybe a little bit of the high end there. It's already starting to sound kind of meaty there. So next up we have a delay, so we can click our delay here. Now this guy is also gonna be on a macro, so if you look at this here, it's gonna be on the effects one. We can even confirm that macro four. So I guess we can just do that now, might as well save some time. So bring this down and then our macro drag and drop this. And what do we say here? We are on 0 0.20, so 20% there. So there we go, 20%, we can bring this all the way up to start hearing our effects. So FX, there we go. Now we need to change some settings here. So our time here, if we click this, it's gonna be straight only, and we're gonna be on one over eight. So I believe this is one over four, so now we're eight. There we go. Now for our low pass and high pass, we kind of do wanna put these up a little bit. Now they don't have to be exactly the same thing in the patch. We're kind of just, you know, doing a little bit of that, cutting the lows, cutting the highs. <laughs> it's already sounding pretty gnarly. Okay, pretty cool there. And then for the next one is going to be a little bit of reverb, which is at 0.27. So let's do that for our macro. And the next one here, let's add some reverb and then 0.27, bring that down. Drag and drop macro four and 0.27. Pretty disgusting. Okay. So that's pretty much set up here. Now we do see this random guy over here. So if we hover over this random, what do we see? It's going over this voice pan. So every time we hear a voice, it's going to be moving the panning across the stereo field, which is the thing I really like doing in pigment. So let's go ahead and add this guy. So random one, if we go back to our synth here, random one, let's drag and drop on the voice pan. And I believe it's kind of 
yeah, 35 depth. So it brings us up to 35. And this right now is unipolar. So we need to go to our random, change it from Turing to sample and hold. So now we're gonna have this as a bipolar. Now, if you look at this modulation source, as you see, we're on sample and hold, sample from white noise, and then retrigger from the clock. So sample and hold, retrigger from white noise, and then sample, or the retrig source is gonna be the clock. And I believe, what do we do? One over eight, yes. So one over eight for this guy, which if you hover over here, this is default. Okay, so we have this here now. We wanna do a little bit of sequencing as we can see the sequencers on here. Now we just have two, and the reason for that, if we turn this on, I like putting this all the way down to two and then just going to the octave and bringing this up by one. So we always have that octave bouncing between zero and one the whole time. Now the cool part of with a patch like this, especially doing this type of phase cancellation kind of thing here, is that the notes sound different every single time and it's kind of an automated process, right? And I think that lets our brains kind of not get so bored of the same sound every single time, even if we held down a couple notes like this. It's really not as repetitive as we would think it would be if we didn't do something like that. Now keep in mind, this is on the default of uh, 0 0.010. Now we can bring this up if we want to and kind of see how that sounds. Gets pretty crazy pretty quick. But yeah, let's double click like back to default. But yeah, it's a lot of fun to play this patch. So mainly, maybe you can recreate this if you'd like to or download the preset if you would want that as well. But also try to build something around this concept here where you have a saw wave, you have the inverted saw wave for the next oscillator, equal amplitude, and then kind of mess around with the drift a little bit. But you do want to have it a little bit because if you don't, it's just going to cancel <laughs> cancel it out and you won't, have a, you won't have a sound to play with. So yeah, that's the kind of concept this patch is built around. Maybe make something cool with it. Or like I said, you can download the free preset. So yeah, thank you for watching. Hopefully you learned something and we'll see you in the next video.